Who the fuck is this nigga, bro? The reason why you're seeing this video again is because I was forced to make changes so I wouldn't get a strike on my channel. In case you need a reminder, Angel claimed that Shinblade sexually assaulted her at Combo Breaker 2023. Her best friend Shadow told the story on December 31st of that year, resulting in a lot of arguing, others coming out about Shinblade, more arguing, and me getting blocked by the supposed victims. I can't stop winning. 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 If possible, I'll try to keep up with updates on the court case to keep you guys in the loop. Do all the usual YouTube stuff and let me know where you'd like to support me. I'm trying to bump it down to just two depending on your preference. Subscribe to Unlucky and enjoy the video. I agreed with Ruthie on how a lot of people were discrediting Angel Story based on the fact she used to do OnlyFans, which is something I personally don't agree with, so that's why I said something. I called out that she'd mentioned the Twitter space on top of not watching my video. Bitch, you guessed it. Engaging from the rolls on that thing you call a neck, I guess you're still playing with your food. How am I being lumped with people discrediting Angel's story when there's an entire army of people calling Angel manipulative, gluttonous, big back whore, fat black porn star, hamburger looking fat ass gold digging thought, dick sucking, nut drinking, possibly diseased ass slut bucket ass bitch, 304, land whale, failed OnlyFans ho, truck stop hooker, ugly looking cow, ugly cum stained twinkie eating diabetic slob, lying evil big bitch with meat in her mouth that lets niggas get on her face, mouth, and hair, who can't get a relationship with a nigga cause they all know she's ran through, who sold her dignity because she was groomed into sex work, and she hangs out with multiple shin blades. So Ruthie, who's the better clown? The one who did his research to make a video or the person making accusations and plugging their ears when they're offered context. I never denied that I asked Angel what she was wearing in the Twitter space. It's in the last video and I'm sure the 3k people who watch the video also know about it. Honest mistake on my part. But if the Twitter space is the only thing you can say about me, despite interacting with and being fully aware of a group you call the Remedial Rangers who have constantly berated Angel ever since the allegation dropped, then I guess you were right. Birds of a feather flock together. Let's touch on the whole lie thing real quick because I still have no idea what she's talking about. As of now, there's still five videos about this topic. One by RMP Kimpachi, two by Lawrence Gilmer, my previous video, and this one. There should be six, but Ernesto deleted his. Although I can't speak on Ernesto's video, at the very least, I know he would have reported the story and given his opinion, even when Envy tagged him claiming he has a full story when Angel posted her police report. What confuses me the most is how she responded to me the day I posted my video was confident that I lied and made shit up about her, even though she hadn't watched my video. Anybody who looked like that is self-explanatory on why you shouldn't respond. Hey man, I'd be crying if I looked like that too, bro. When Monty came out about Shinblade, she let everyone know she'd be willing to speak privately about the situation due to her own mental health. Julian says the corniest thing I've ever seen. Nah, don't let them DM you. Either respectfully fuck them, or smoke behind you and let that be the first and only warning. All right, Captain save a -Ho, what were you gonna do if I or someone else Dion Monty about her story? Okay, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Nah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Stay back, Lady Monty. This lowly knave need not know if your story rings true. I'm so glad we have people like Julian and Marquise who work hard in order to protect women in the FGC. Marquise didn't go to the police or post his best friend's assault story until he teabagged Shinblade months after it happened, while Ice JJ Fish is gatekeeping a potential victim story. We need more people like this in the community. He's hitting up! By the way, if anyone asks who that was in a previous edit, I honestly don't know. I saw a tweet saying she was TSC's new social media manager or whatever, and I saw that she was bald too, so. That was easy. The truth is robotic biceps. Oh! oh power bomb. Yeah, breaks the ground there too. Oh! 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 Here it is! Here it is! No! 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 Oh, he almost got it. Oh, over. Oh, right back into the power bomb, young lady. And Joe Crush gonna take it 2-0. 
allow me to introduce the sin for women himself, Max Ninja, who said I'm not trying to help and that I use fake gotchas. The fake gotcha he mentions is me calling him out for posting his story about Shinblade without evidence. I know this because the tweet I mentioned was made at 11.48 AM. The two people that noticed the lack of proof making him realize his massive fuck up came around 12 PM. So he starts posting receipts while also insulting anyone who might ask in the future. Where are the receipts? Even though dude got caught in 4K telling Shadow to jump from a higher floor and y'all are asking for more, even though y'all will still deny, I'll probably add more. Are you not the victim in this situation? The fuck you mean you'll probably add more? For someone in their ace attorney arc, you should know that you use evidence to back up your claims. You don't throw shit out and expect your words to be taken at face value because of a completely unrelated situation unless you're bluffing. If you can tell me what Shinblade blowing up at Shadow has to do with you not posting evidence, then this case is closed. Someone even told you to handle this legally due to the mountains of evidence you had against Shinblade, and instead of convincing him, you gave up and claimed he's denying. Tell me, Max, how am I not trying to help when painkillers dangling evidence over people's heads by threatening to tag the women involved, but didn't forget to tag Ernesto Lopez? Are you fucking dumb? This isn't about Noisy Child being a problem in the community. My issue stems from a TO using evidence as an ultimatum against someone he knows is problematic. How either of you are TOs blows my fucking mind. Since I'm not trying to help by documenting everything that happened when the story broke and speaking to eight out of the 21 people I contacted, you're probably wondering what Max has been up to. Jack shit. Recently he was allegedly harassed, followed, and threatened by Shinblade at Anime BluesCon with a pretty nonchalant response after it happened. Halos and Monty talked about the incident three days after Max did, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the police were never involved. Judging by who I'm talking about, this running theme shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. Max buried what was supposed to be a traumatizing event under anime reaction gifts and art since the incident happened. So he either doesn't care he was followed, threatened, and harassed by the same person who threatened his cats and got him kicked out of his local scene, allegedly, or it didn't happen. I wanted to keep up the trend of me not helping by DMing Max to validate his story and talk about it in this video. From what I understand, Max knew Shinblade was attending Anime Blues Con, and being the least threatening person in the FGC, Max didn't want to cause any trouble. Apparently, Max said something to Marcus that set him off when they played, which ended up with him being harassed and followed at the event. Alex Chaos, who said it was present at the event, noted that Max was never harassed, going so far as to say Max was the aggressor. If you're wondering how I know any of this, it's thanks to doing my research, something that Angel should do since I apparently lied and made shit up about her. Not only did Max and his witness ignore me when I asked about what happened, Angel and Shadow blocked me. Shadow blocked me for obvious reasons, but what did I do to get blocked by Angel? This nigga PK wanna be a detective so bad and is getting on my last nerve. Maybe if he didn't talk shit to us and about us, we'd be more cooperative. <clears throat> no, I can't laugh yet. I've got to hold it in. So the person who wants to document your story gets blocked for playing detective and talking shit. But the victims posting Twitter threads instead of going to the cops are trying to help. Nigga, aren't y'all the victims? Out of the many people that have dragged your name in the mud, I get blocked for wanting to document a potential victim story. If you're referring to the non-serious replies I made after you made assumptions about a video you haven't watched while you and your posse insulted me, shut the fuck up and watch these combos. <laughs>
Hold that shit, buttmonger. Fuck short combos. Yes! We had a normal conversation in DMs and you were perfectly cooperative. Not a single mention of me talking shit to you or about you. You even said you didn't have a problem with me and that you're not a hard person to talk to. I'm not either, but I know whatever reason you had to block me is asinine. I was unblocked for months until I DM'd Max on June 13th. The second I DM Max, he told Angel and she told them to block me. They can't disobey orders, so they were like, Yes, ma'am. When you told me to leave you alone because you were done with the topic, I respected that. I didn't plan on messaging you until I saw you talking to one of your detractors who threatened you and you ignored me. Logically, it doesn't make any sense for you to block me while giving your undivided attention to the people who despise you. For the ones like DJ who don't seem to understand why that's an issue, let me explain. Let me remind you I never insulted Angel called her a liar or made up a story about her. Don't forget I have over a dozen or so screenshots of people doing everything I just listed. Also keep in mind the reasons I'm blocked, playing detective and talking shit. I've seen Angel respond to Six Erekin when he said, Army hearty, the lowest scum in society. A fat black only fans model, a real whale, a beast. That could turn the seas and blah, 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 blah. And he's not the only one. Chode Scrub, James MK, Jason Elbow, Shadow Law, Flow God, Chris Pagan, JL, and Think Fast have been the most vocal when it comes to discrediting Angel via insults, saying she's lying, or making shit up about her, all of which she's responded to. When you're aware of a group that's targeting you, you have two choices. Ignore these people as to not give them attention, or interact with them and start feeling the fire. The last video wouldn't be 58 minutes if she picked option one. Just last month, I saw her and Shadow responding to Jason Elbow, someone who's been on the forefront when it comes to insulting Angel and Shadow. What this tells me is that disrespect is perfectly fine and on the table. So James MK, Flo God, Jason Elbow, and even you can call Angel a fat, ugly cow bitch, or say Marquise is a chained up lap dog that does everything Angel tells him to do. Marquise. Like, yes, ma'am. He can't speak no more. I'll tell you. Yes, ma'am. Block him. Yes, ma'am. You can even call him a simp and they'll respond to it. But this ain't a two way street. They can throw insults and make claims about you all they want. If you're someone who wants information, like me, and want to know why it took a tea bag to spill the beans about a sexual assault story, or why Angel left out certain parts of her story, you can go fuck yourself. Here's another example. DJ PRS has been beefing with someone online for four years. You'd think over those four years, he wouldn't pay any mind towards someone who clearly doesn't like him. Shockingly, he's continued responding to him on Twitter, YouTube, and mentions him in his bio. Hello, DJ. What's happening? I'm gonna need you to focus on not speedrunning your mortality and why Boogie of all people would lie about his cancer. So if you could have that done by Saturday, that'd be great, okay? Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. I'm also gonna need you to find out why your homegirl keeps talking to people calling her a fat bitch. Unlike Angel, Max, Ruthie, or Halos, who I heard watched my video and didn't like it because of how I came off, but still said I attempted to victim blame, I've shown them talking shit to me and about me. Angel and her friends would rather converse with people who berate them and actively discredit their experiences and that's perfectly fine. Just understand the burden of proof falls to the accusers. If an accuser's reaction is to mock you when asking for evidence or talk shit about you when you're genuinely trying to understand their story, I think that says a lot more about who's really trying to help. What's that boy? Text locked their account? What a shame. Wanted to ask about the harassment story made by Infinity FGC, but she blocked me. One of the two people I asked about the situation didn't want to talk about it, and the other never responded. So since I'm not trying to help, how about we go over the story? According to the twit longer written by Infinity FGC, Tex had been harassing her since 2019. This story was made on January 28th, 2021, and she knows the reason why it took so long to come out about it is because a handful of women enabled the harassment. Infinity briefly goes over her time joining Kunoichi CGL when being approached by Nips, long before she knew who Tex was. Nips wanted to sign Infinity on for Aspire, but Tex wanted her to be a Valkyrie, to which she agreed. Fast forward a bit to Tex and Nips falling out. Tex wanted ownership of Valkyries and Infinity is unfortunately the middleman in all of this and chooses to stay neutral. Tex then tries to slander CGL for being sexist and not giving women contracts. She also says she was never denied a contract and that she could have one at any time. He even sponsors her to this very day. 
When Infinity was being confronted about her treatment on the CGL team, she spoke up about her experience being quite good at CGL. Tex didn't like that. Tex meant scorched earth with subtweets, rumors, harassment, etc. One of the lies spread by Tex was how she told other orgs that Valkyries had a cease and desist order against Kunoichi, attempting to hurt the brand. What made Infinity break her silence was when Tex brought up how she felt as though she wasted time caring about her, even though this whole drama was something she created. That was a short summary of the story and I can't do it justice at the moment. I wanted to talk about it briefly because according to Tex, she was harassed by Zuzu in the past. Anyway, the full story will be linked down below if you want to read it. And remember, if you ask her for evidence, she doesn't owe you anything. Before Angel cracks the whip and sends the herd, the next segment is about the stars of the show, Tinblade and Zuzu. It's weird having five different stories dealing with the same people that all contain similar themes being harassment, threats, or making them feel uncomfortable. We have one from Tex, one from Mani, one from Angel, and two from Max Ninja. I don't think they'd be this outspoken against them if nothing happened. You can assume there's a pattern of behavior when looking at these stories, but what I find most suspicious is how these allegations were released a month or so after Shadow posted Angel's story. Even so, you can't really ignore them since they could serve as evidence for how Shinblade and Zuzu act. Quick thing to note, as of now between August 30th and 31st, I Am Fury suddenly made a tweet relating to Shinblade. He doesn't go into too much detail, only saying that Shinblade tried to ruin him and that he couldn't speak on it out of respect for the image of the sponsor he was a part of at the time. I feel sorry for the people who think he's innocent. The most narcissistic and charismatic people have the power to persuade, especially when they need you more than you need them. I hope nobody has to go through what I did because you deserve more. The other tweets he made showcase him venting about stuff which I won't show cause that's his business. I'm gonna assume he's completely cut off ties with Shinblade and probably doesn't want to speak on the topic. I'm not sure what happened between Fury and Shinblade, but I'm sure once this video is out, Zuzu will probably say something about that. Shinblade then made a response to Fury that I'm sure you can read for yourself. This would now bring the total of stories about Shinblade's behavior to six. This story is extremely vague, and all we know is that according to Fury, Shinblade tried to ruin him. However, I did let Fury know that he could speak to me if he's willing to to do so. Also, Miss Kitty made a tweet trying to debunk Fury's claims about Shinblade trying to ruin him. And even though she edited the tweet, she didn't change who she tagged because she tagged the wrong account. <sighs> These people are fucking idiots, man. I swear to God. I might as well talk about this since I didn't think it was relevant when I made the previous video. On the day the allegations were made, which was December 31st, I Am Fury shared his opinion about the situation saying the following. It's false because I was there the whole time. Shadow's story is based on what he heard, but we were there with Shin. The only time I wasn't was after the auction. Me, Strider, and Trev were in the parking lot drinking. Then we came back in. Shortly after that, I linked back with Shinblade and he was with Zuzu. Then we all went out to eat afterwards. Shinblade and Zuzu went back to their hotel. On the way out to eat, Shinblade talked to Shadow on the way out. Also, Shinblade, Shadow, and the girl who's making the accusation hung out at Evo together after the allegations. When this is brought up in a random Twitter thread, he says, Stances change, please leave me out of this. Thank you. Naturally, I wanted to ask Fury about this and he respectfully declined, which is fair. When I asked Angel about it, she said he took his statement back because Shinblade lied to him. Then Fury made his statement talking about Shinblade. I didn't mention any of this because Fury said he didn't want to speak on it, and I thought it made the situation even more confusing. I also wanted to respect his decision in staying out of the situation at the time. Because why would you immediately make a statement, retract it, and not comment on it? Judging from the tweets he made, you can make the assumption that Shinblade lied to him about what I don't know, but it's confusing having two contrasting statements that you refuse to speak on. This also means we have a first-hand witness to the events at Combo Breaker and a witness to Zuzu's story on Angel hanging out with Shinblade and Zuzu at EVO. EVO took place during August of last year and the allegation was made in December. Unless they time traveled, I think Fury may have misspoke. Another theory I have is that Fury's statement could possibly refer to one of Shinblade's alleged victims. However, the date and time line up to when Shadow posted Angel's story, so that's pretty much out the window. One last thing before I end this segment because I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted to say. Angel, you should be grateful somebody chose to cover your story. Because I know for a fact it would have faded into obscurity just like Chrissy's story did. It's been seven years going on eight since that situation happened and there isn't a single video about it besides mine. I could have been like everybody else and said you're a chocolate milk manufacturing double chin boomer who's upset that Shinblade rejected her so you made an allegation to ruin Shinblade's life but I didn't. I could have fed into every single story Zuzu told me and paraded them around as if every single one of them were true and created a one-sided video, 
but I didn't. If I'm correct, then the court date is October 9th and you won't have to convince Twitter something happened to you. You'll have to convince a court of law something happened to you. I tried talking to you and everybody else who claimed to be victims of Shinblade, but funny enough, the people you crucify were more than willing to speak to me. I offered my arm to pull you out and listen to what you had to say, but you refused and sunk deeper. Good luck in court. Obviously, I'm not implying they've done anything in these stories. I just wanted to point out something that bothered me. Before I start, I found a notepad I made that had questions for Shadow pertaining to Zuzu's statement, seeing as he attended these events with Angel, but I can't do that. Zuzu shared a portion of her police report where she stated the following. She didn't pick up on anything suspicious when Shinblade and Angel came back from the car. Apparently, she saw them walking together in the main hall at Combo Breaker with Angel holding a drink in her hand. They hung out without any problems at another convention. Zuzu said they hung out in a suite at EVO with half of the 09 Tekken community. DEO was another event she claims they didn't have any problems at. She didn't know about these allegations until the Twitter post. Angel and Shadow never confronted me. They both sat in my face at Evo and CEO and didn't say a thing. I spoke to Shadow for the first and last time about this on December 21st. Zuzu recounts Angel and Shinblade sharing a hug near the HyperX arena at Evo and speaking to each other at the event. I don't really have much to say about the first two statements besides that they don't quite match with how Angel presented her side of the story. The third statement from the report conflicts with Angel's story because Angel made it seem like there was a confrontation somewhere between May up and until December 31st. The tweets saying they gave Shinblade time to confess can support this, but if Zuzu's statement rings true, none of that happened. No, 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 no. Shut up. She raised me shut to up. I'm still saying Shut up. Shut up. But shut up. She raised me to shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. But all I, all I, got I want to address the Twitter space again since I wanted to apologize for thinking anybody had reasonable thought and common sense. So let's recap what happened until I joined the Twitter space. Zuzu came into my DMs talking about Angel being practically naked and selling herself at a tournament. I thought that was a very unintelligent comment. I don't think her being addressed a certain way matters. I don't know if an FGC tournament is the best way to sell a product. I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but I never cared what Angel was wearing at Combo Breaker. I asked because I wanted to see if Zuzu's talk about Angel being naked was remotely true. I told Angel in DMs I didn't mean to inquire about her choice of clothing at the event, since knowing what the victim was wearing is something I don't even care about, unlike Zuzu. But she won't tell you that. When Ruthie and Angel were giving me shit about the Twitter space, Zuzu sent me this picture and said the following. If folks want to get mad at you for asking that question, feel free to send them this and tell them to please be fucking for real. <laughs> I can't believe I said for real even though real was right there. Oh my god. As hilarious and petty as that would be, I didn't want to do that for a couple reasons. If I use this as a rebuttal to whatever Angel said to me, that'd give her an actual reason to block me and I'd be no better than her detractors. As to why Zuzu thought this picture would be a witty comeback back is funny. Her bio says, I used to suck dick on Twitter, but it got boring. Clearly, she doesn't care if you highlighted her previous hotivities. Research doesn't seem to be Team Angel's strong suit because if they actually watched my video, they would know I made fun of Zuzu's theory on top of mentioning Angel being an SA victim as a child. I never believed Zuzu's claim about Angel because if she was, we would have heard about it. As an example, Evo in Combo Breaker 2024, where players would sooner drown in pools and memorize the soap, water, shower, bread and butter combo. At Combo Breaker, it got so so bad that attendees and the event director Rick tweeted about it. So if Angel waltzed in a combo breaker practically naked as Zuzu claimed, I'm almost sure we'd see people talking about it or a tweet from Rick that goes something like, attendees must be fully clothed with inside the venue or you will be banned. Either that or they toss her out the front door. Shadow immediately disproved Zuzu's theory by saying that's not true, we were matching. Which made me question why Zuzu said that in the first place and why I asked for pictures so I could see them at the event. And despite everyone having public access Access to her old content, what sense would it make for me or anyone to join a Twitter space and openly ask what she was wearing at Combo Breaker? Another point they love to pair it is that the Twitter space wasn't an echo chamber and they'd be right. It was a massive circle jerk. To quote Shadow, The point of the space was to let everybody chime in and talk about it because they had a lot to say on the post. Good men, hear me. The boy lies! Which was true until they got challenged on anything. When Angel said mute, Shadow said how many? He can't speak no more. She's done wasting our time. She she can't speak no more. Look, I'm gonna answer this. Hold on. Just answer the question. I'm asking the question. I'll tell you. Cut his mic. Now. The fuck? Am I talking Spanish? I mean, I don't understand what you're getting disrespectful about. Cut his mic. Why do I still hear this man? Hey, look. 
Cut. Also, Harada joined the Twitter space and I can guarantee he was confused. So I guess if he happened to ask a question Angel didn't like, Shadow would have followed orders. Don't even get me started when Angel reacted to an email somebody received from the TL Javi at Texas Showdown. This is why women don't go to events and locals. We gotta wear cameras to prove something happened despite multiple victims coming out and filing police reports. Great way at keeping people safe. Anyone is justified to be upset because Texas Showdown chose to not ban Shinblade, especially Angel. My problem is the blatant disrespect from Super Yen, Angel, and many others saying Texas Showdown is unsafe for women and the TOs don't care. God forbid a TO has to make an honest judgment and consider placing a ban. This is the worst response they could have actually given. This is absolute garbage. You deserved better. I don't care if it was malicious or not. The entire point is they do not care. Hey there, after discussing this with multiple people and taking a deeper look myself, I can't justify banning the person in question based on what has been given to me so far. The SA allegations, if serious, should have been reported to local or appropriate authorities and not on social media platforms. As in all recent years, we aim to provide a safe space for all, and there will be off-duty Houston police officers roaming around the event throughout the weekend, one of which is a member of the FGC himself. In addition there will be hotel security to help assist. They will be made aware of the situation to help maintain that safe space for you and everyone else who may be concerned. If you have any other concerns, Concerns, you may reach out to one of our staff or the Houston police and we will respond accordingly. We have to be as careful as possible when considering situations like this. Some are pretty clear to justify a ban. Unfortunately the situation is not clear. If you have any evidence that clearly defines either the SA allegations or direct threats, please let us know. The argument presented here boils down to, if you don't agree with the accusers and ban this person, we will slander you and your event. I can't see this as anything but the accusers trying to strong arm TOs into making a decision decision so they can feel satisfied, which is something that should bother everybody, including event organizers and TOs. You acknowledge they've done their own investigation and made their judgment. You see the precautions they've taken in order to not have a repeat situation. So instead of providing further evidence to convince them otherwise, which is something you saw them offer, you choose to complain about it instead of following up with the solution they just offered you. Merriam-Webster defines obsessed as preoccupied with or haunted by some idea or interest, being in a state of obsession. Let's do a quick game of compare and contrast to see who is more obsessed. Making a video, replying to all your tweets or insulting you to beta response, and 9 times out of 10, it works. Threatening to find you IRL in DMs, saying you're lying, constantly quote tweeting you, spreading rumors, and again, tagging you in multiple tweets. Creating a fake obituary about someone you don't like, stalk their profile, use their profile picture, and changing your name to match theirs. According to Angel and her group, I'm obsessed over a situation that doesn't involve me. Here's a fun fact. When you post something online, for example, a sexual assault allegation against someone in the FGC, both you and your story have the right to be critiqued and analyzed because you made it public. Judging by how she treats people who are uninformed of the situation, it's pretty clear she didn't want her story being questioned. And if she didn't want that, it shouldn't be on Twitter where literally everybody can see it. At this point, I'm sure everybody knows the tweet was supposed to be an Amber Alert about Shinblade's behavior. But when you notice said warning being shared by other people, regardless of what they're saying about it, I think you can call that mission accomplished. Here's a riddle I want you to solve. I follow your every move. I speak to you all the time. I'm a tier above the rest, ranking number two for this crime. I can catch you anywhere, so have some respect. I have a way of offending people, but not in the way you'd expect. Who am I? The answer to the riddle is Michael Lawrence Parks, aka Theo Lee Ronan. He's one of the many people who discredited Angel ever since the story broke that I somehow have history with. If you don't know who he is, don't worry too much. Back in my FGC criminals video, I went over Infiltration's ban and his name appeared on the ban statement. He was in my comments talking about being banned, to which my actual response was... <laughs> He made another comment about Pink Diamond being trans as if I didn't know. It's funny how I never made the correlation even though I saw his name plain as day. 
since he wasn't the focus of the video and I had no idea who he was, I forgot about it and moved on. That is until Shadow posted the allegation. Thanks to Angel, Tex, and Max, I started seeing him again. Almost everybody was talking to or about him. Even I made a tweet since he talked about me, but I deleted it thinking he was just some random nobody on Twitter not worth my time. Once I saw this tweet by Tarzan Geef mentioning him, everything clicked. The burner account I responded to, the comments on my video, his name, everything. Cloud is often used to refer to someone with influence or power, something neither of us have. Whatever cloud I'm getting from someone who isn't FGC is unclear. Shadow had to post her story in order for it to gain any traction. Angel couldn't, not with the kind of following she has. It only took one look at her account for others to write her off as some random OnlyFans girl starving for attention trying to ruin a man's life. I thought an unbiased take would please both sides. Even though I stayed neutral when covering the story, Angel and her sheep grouped me in with those slandering them on a daily basis. How ludicrous. Nicole went relatively unknown until the allegations hit, like a lit cigarette in a gas leak. A blazing inferno in the den of winter attracting the denizens and riffraff to bask in his warmth. Now that I've pinpointed the true culprits of infatuation, their words slide right off me. A second skin shed and left behind, as my forked tongue seeks to connect spray. My pleas to hear my perspective on the ordeal fell on deaf ears. A sister fee and task resulted in wasting time trying to reason with those committed to misunderstanding me. She might have told me to go to hell, and even in hell, an angel sometimes makes an appearance. There's only one way to go from here. As far as I can tell, I'm a bit closer to heaven. During the back and forth I had with this guy, he said that I participated in clout chasing endeavors. Oh my God, that moron! <laughs> Which is funny because here's multiple tweets where he mentions Nance Demetrius. Another tweet where he tagged multiple people for a live stream nobody watched. His tweets about me and my friend Maui where he was so desperate for insults that he dug through his media tab for a picture he took two years ago. Don't forget, Angel. I have your address based on that ceasefire you posted. My brother-in-law and sister work for the feds and live in Toledo. I don't need to catch up at a venue to see how you react to me directly. The moment I do come to an event, you better not say a motherfucking word unless you want to meet your maker. Don't worry, guys. I'm fine. Last night brought out a lot of pain and I wasn't sure if it was ready to fully let go. Now I know I'll just be fine. So far, I'm okay. Let's just play games. Most of these F- I will slap my spider dick on your forehead if you don't keep reading PK. Listen to what daddy tells you to do. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't. I can't hold it together. Most of these FGC niggas will be in a body cast for the way they talk shit to me and they know it. I don't play about that shit talk. Hovid really had you thinking shit sweet. Thankfully, I have some hood friends. Gangsters move in silence. Guys, does anyone have $35? I really want to promote my music and go on tour. But PK, he told you he's been getting death threats and being harassed by burner accounts on Twitter. He thinks me, you, Angel, Tex, Akatsuki, Miss Array, Dez, and DJ all have burner accounts harassing him when he's done it to them or other people. If you're going to complain about being bullied, at least practice what you preach. When JDCR was basically robbed at DreamHack due to a bunch of dumbasses forgetting to disconnect their pads, Bailey received tons of backlash and death threats. Even if the latter isn't true, your reaction shouldn't be, the Bailey always trying to play victim but never has a Carfax. Any real motherfucker will have the Carfax of death threats made to said person. Jabaili is just a bitch and a prejudiced bitch, plain and simple. So let me get this straight. Jabaili's a bitch for not showing receipts. But when I cast out because every account you made was terminated or you delete damn near everything you post, suddenly you don't have anything to prove. Here's his reaction to DJ losing a family member while finding out his uncle had colon cancer and DJ getting an eviction notice. Here he is making fun of Tex and DJ for having cancer, notably by calling DJ fat ass cancer boy. Here's another two where he says, who cares to someone losing their father. Hey, um, quick editor's note, man, this sucks. Um, I had a video where he said this because I didn't want to read it and I thought it'd be fun funny if I showed the tweet and the video, but for some reason the audio's cooked and his account is deleted, so I can't recover that. Imagine him reading this. I hate using this line, but is this you? As PK's eyes scanned the tweet, at that moment, he knew he was cooked. He couldn't believe it. Out of the thousands of tweets he made, somebody managed to find the one he attempted to hide from the public. Little did Theo know, PK didn't give a shit. He never did. 
because his one tweet couldn't possibly compare with the gold mine he's accumulated over these last few months. With a swift motion, PK raises his arm up to the tier two sex offender and utters the words, Imaginary technique, tweet for tweet. Well, gotta head out to molest the minors today. I should have molested your child instead. You're a tier two sex offender and you're and you say stuff like this. I love all women. Again, dumb bitch, I ain't report shit about you. Sorry your dad molested you, not my fucking problem. And this is exactly why women ain't shit. This next one is funny, bro. I, I, I can't lie, it's funny as fuck. I love how people give cuddle for no room to breathe or sleep. You deserve every bad thing that comes your way, bitch. Payback's a bitch and her name ain't Cuddlecore with that manly ass Adam's apple. Fuck that feminist porn video Oh, Don't get it twisted, I love all women. Yo Capcom, if Infiltration can't get away with saying nigga, how come this thought is able to? Or are we just picking and choosing who gets the band hammer due to who sucks the most dick? And let's not forget, Cuddlecore is also part of the sex work gang. She has a whole ass porn vid leaked in the discord. I'm telling you bro, it's out there. Heard you through the grapevine. And it's not surprising either, considering she supports sex work addicts and AOD users like Nicole, AKA Angel20Z. I'm starting to wonder why Cuddlecore blocked me, bro. Like, <laughs> If you're seeing this in the part of the video where I was laughing at his music was deleted because he wanted to be a baby and submitted a copyright takedown. I had a feeling this would happen the moment the video came out, but nothing happened until now. If he wants to submit a copyright takedown over his dog shit music, that's perfectly fine by me. If anyone else plans on making a video about him, be wary that he'll baby rage and use the YouTube copyright system against you. He's done it to Ruby King, and he's done it to me. You've gone on record to say that you've been bullied, getting threats towards you and your family, on top of you stating that you've been doxxed, but I highly doubt that. Doxing is the unauthorized disclosure of your private details. Emphasis on private. Low Tier God and Sonic Soul have been doxxed. Your information is accessible via the Sex Offender Registry in Ohio, which is a public database. Not only that, but on multiple occasions, you've told Emery Reigns, Jason Elbow, Angel, and many others that you have their address. Going so far to tell Angel you have people in law enforcement that can find her in real life for you. So you have no grounds to complain about being bullied or receiving threats when you've done it to other people. Then again, you said it yourself. You don't have to prove anything to me. So don't bother tagging me in a stream where you explain yourself to an audience of 10 people. You might have not helped me with finding the Valkyrie story because I found that on my own when doing research on the first video. You helped me show people how much of a fucking dumbass you are. Thanks. I really appreciate it. By the way, nice job being ratioed on Twitter by Lunar Lex. When you start fighting on Twitter like I know you will, don't be shocked when hundreds of people are making fun of you for being a tier 2 sex offender that makes empty threats. Hold up. I can't wait to see what your insides look like. You want to see what another man's insides look like? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, I'm recording. I'm coming for you? Can't wait to make you scream. <laughs> You want to make another man scream? Damn, I guess the slammer really had an effect on you, huh? Hey, hey, nigga, you got a nice little ass, nigga. I have relationship with... <laughs> I have relationships with women. And sex was 15-year-olds. And I got news for you. That means you're a sex offender. <laughs> as tough as you want to act, nobody is scared of you. <laughs> Fucking pathetic. And uh, here's some other stuff I just chopped up together. Have fun with that, I guess. I'm beyond living with this shit, man. You motherfuckers need to learn to side to leave slipping dogs lie because the same shit here that causes motherfuckers to want to go on a shooting rampage. But I'm gonna say this, if we were face to face, you would not be talking to me without some consequences. And those con you would not be talking to me like this without some consequences. That's what I mean to say. And what I mean by consequences, I mean specifically this. You would not be sitting here talking shit to me the way that you do without getting your teeth knocked out. Hi, I'm Pedro Lee Rona. I'm a sex offender. Would you friend me, please? Damn, man. He's so bad. I can't go one fucking day without happening to work damage control. He's so I'm bad. already in therapy for half of this shit. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> the fuck I look like? Doing this shit on a goddamn daily. <laughs> Crashed it out. 
I'm not calling you off for clout like you've hypnotized yourself into thinking. I could care less about you calling me a bitch for having Ming Mei as my profile picture or insulting me and my friend. I found out who you were thanks to Angel and Co arguing with you non-stop and I also wanted to laugh at you. When this video drops, make sure you tag whoever you think is stalking you in an 8 hour live stream 20 people accidentally click on. I know he's gonna start crying about me using public information to bully or harass him even though he's in the same to me and other people. And I know my following is basically non-existent but I don't condone harassment towards him. If he wants to talk shit and delete it because his pussy hurts, that's on him. I got a new fly girl, she got that wet wet. Got a big crib, nigga, he don't set trip. Gambit stay with them pieces, they be hitting. Jubilee be hella lit and she with it. Before I cover Angel's report, I like to bring up something I almost forgot to mention because I think this is something everybody should know. I'm about to fucking snitch. <laughs> <sighs> Around the time Angel posted her police report, I was speaking with Zuzu. Zuzu offered me money to find discrepancies in Angel's police report, something I was going to do anyway because she didn't feel like it and I refused to take her money. So am I still part of the group discrediting Angel or am I still not trying to help? On May 6th, Angel showed the police report she initially made on January 5th. The report brought new information missing from her original telling of the story. I'm not too worried about the date, more so the time when it happened, that being 11 p.m. Going off what I was told, the incident may have taken place on Friday, May 26, and not the 27th, which is Saturday. Shadow convinced Angel the experience was assault, which is different from what she said in her original story. It came off as Angel and Shadow already knowing what happened was sexual assault. Not that Angel didn't see it that way, and it took Shadow to convince her otherwise. Specifically, she said the following. So, I'm like, man, I need to get back to Marquise and let him know. Like, so I wasn't coming at Marquise on no, oh my God, like, oh. no, I was coming to Marquise like, I got some Hemi and I'm about to drown you in it. Like, you ain't gonna never believe what this man just tried me, how he just tried me in this car. I go to Marquise and I'm telling him everything and he's progressively getting more and more mad as fuck. So I'm kind of confused, like, he's like, that's sexual assault. You told him no, right? I'm like, yeah. A slight contradiction where Shinblade mentions her OnlyFans and not her Twitter, which isn't a big deal to get upset over. The big deal is Shinblade moving to a secluded location where this took place. Shinblade invited Angel to his vehicle that was parked in the Renaissance Hotel parking lot to drink Hennessy, to which Angel agreed. Once Marcus began fondling and masturbating in front of Angel, to which she said no several times to, Shinblade then turned on his vehicle and moved to a more secluded location in the parking lot, which was nearby Angel's parked vehicle. I think a fair question everyone will want an answer to is, why was any of this left out? They could have easily brought this to a police, TOs, or security the night of or after the incident. The event took place in May and didn't go public until December, so they had more than enough time to gather all the details. But we know that'd be a waste of their time and it wouldn't do anything, so let's move on. Zuzu claims Angel forgot what happened, which is something I highly doubt for three reasons. Reason one, Angel told everything about what happened to Shadow. Reason two, Angel made a 10 minute TikTok about the incident. Reason three, the entire story is fully documented within the police report. The only reason I can guess why she said this because according to her, Shinblade and Angel shared a hug at Evo. Now I can't confirm this happened, but the action of Angel sharing a hug with the same man she claimed that assaulted her doesn't make sense. Angel stated it's a common response for victims to keep in contact with their abuser as she's done the same with her own. On one hand, you can assume hanging out at Evo was a common response like Angel claimed. Or you could be like me and wonder why you'd share any amount of contact with your supposed abuser. Being the protector of women he is, I would assume Shadow would add the missing information to his tweet or mention it in some way, seeing as he's had access to the police report months after making it. He made time to fix a spelling mistake when making his initial tweet, but he's too busy responding to people calling him a simp to do something that would take five minutes. Angel is justified in being upset that the police won't help her. However, Angel and her supporters failed to realize there is a lack of proof. I'm not saying that in spite of Angel. What's currently available isn't enough to prove that Shimbley did anything. I fail to understand how Mani or Halos are calling for Shimbley to be banned when the evidence is circumstantial at best. Angel's original video barely holds up due to missing details. The phone call doesn't tell us much since Marcus didn't admit to anything and depending on the law, it might have been illegally recorded. Additionally, the report stated they don't have probable cause to make an arrest due to lack of evidence 
and other victims Angel mentioned, not making a statement in regards to Shinblade. It's upsetting to know that, in a way, Angel and Shadow were right about the police not being able to help them. Nevertheless, I have a genuine question. How do you expect law enforcement to continue seven months after the incident was reported, having virtually no proof on top of no one speaking against the accused? Like you cut, G. On June 17th, Shinblade made a tweet addressing the injunction. If you want to read it for yourself, I'll link it down below. An injunction is a court order that requires a person to cease from doing a specific action, which in this case would bar Angel from saying anything about Shinblade. There isn't much to say about this, so I'm moving on to my DMs with Shinblade and his band status. I can't show much due to legal stuff, so the best I'll do is quote what he said. I asked about Max's first claim, dealing with him being threatened and kicked out of the Memphis scene. He said, No threats were made, but he did get kicked out. I'm not in charge of the Memphis scene. When I asked about Anime Blues Con, he didn't respond. So much for getting both sides. Back in May, I asked him about his band status and he told me he's going to DreamHack and Evo. There's conflicting statements between Shinblade complaining that Ernesto didn't contact him claiming he isn't banned, even though he stated in the tweet that he has been banned from a few tournaments. I tried asking Shinblade about any updates to his band status recently, but Zuzu was kind enough to chime in and say that he's not answering questions. <sighs> you know, it's fine if you don't want to answer questions pertaining to your court case, but having your girlfriend speak for you when you could have answered a simple yes or no question is a little sus, but whatever. The one thing that agitates the shit out of me is when you say, sorry, when Zuzu says you're not answering questions, yet you're willing to address Fury's tweet, but won't speak to me about your band status. Are you not answering questions or do I have to make a tweet about you not speaking to me in order to pry a response out of you? At the time of writing, there haven't been any official statements stating he's been banned that I could find. However, Rick and Jabali stopped Shinblade from registering at their respective events. I'm not sure if he was informed of that, which could have led to the confusion. So you want me to go kill him? Kill him? This was the most ghetto dumpster fire I ever chose to talk about. There could be a pattern of behavior following Zuzu and Shinblade, but the accusers have a hissy fit if you criticize them, make jokes, or ask for information. Everybody's busy fighting when they haven't factored in the consequences of what could happen. So let's say Shinblade did everything in every single story I showed on top of assaulting Angel at Combo Breaker. He'd be fucked since he's in the military. It does matter the difference between if you're an active duty, if you're on active orders, and if you are a reservist. Reservists, typically, they'll just get kicked out the military. As long as you are not on orders, they'll usually just give you a dishonorable discharge and keep it moving. So if you're on active orders, even as a reservist, or you're an active duty military personnel, you can't fall under that double jeopardy rule. Even if the civilian sector does not put you in jail as a military personnel, they still can put you in jail because you acted out of line while being active on orders. In the case of Shinblade, you can be charged under double jeopardy. The military itself does not believe in double jeopardy. If his command is a whole different situation. Let's say Angel is 100% correct. And to prove our point, let's just say they said all the court. The military can say, F that. We're not doing that. You're going to jail for what you did. I'm going to be honest with you. I do not think Shinblade wants it to go to court. If they do take it to court, there is a chance that he can go to jail through the military for double jeopardy. Your command has to know about this. It don't matter if you are reservist, active, if you are 90 day, none of that matters. Your command has to know about it. Any legal action has to be recorded to your command, especially when it comes to something like sexual harassment and sexual assault, because the military has a huge problem with that. I would think for him just being a military personnel and me being a veteran and knowing how the military is, he's going to want to move this out if he don't even want his command to know what the fuck is going on because of that double jeopardy rule. If they get involved and he is proven to be guilty, then he has to face the consequences in the military. So not only would Shinblade's life be ruined, that would also imply people within the Tekken community or Shinblade Circle knew about his behavior and chose to ignore it. Also, accusers may be successful in scaring away attendees from events if they claim said event is unsafe or that TOs don't care. So as a result, TOs would act on impulse with their bands rather than make proper judgment under the strain of their reputation. Which is what happened to Sam Halen. He was immediately punished without a chance to defend himself due to fabricated stories. Thankfully, he was exonerated due to the CCTV footage showing no assault taking place, which is something I'm sure we'd love to have in this situation, but we don't. Now let's say Angel, Monty, Max, Tex, and anyone else who has a story about Shinblade turned out to be lying. And I'm sure I have to reiterate for Angel and Cole that this is only a hypothetical 
hypothetical. Angel worrying about Shadow's brand and the enormous backlash they get would be the least of their problems. That would mean we let Shadow, a sponsored player, along with his friends, successfully spread a false narrative about Shinblade. The main accusers, their supporters, and future victims won't be trusted if they come out with another story. We could see people who have been harassed or assaulted within the FGC, but nobody's going to believe them, or they might be too scared to speak up due to hypothetical falsehoods from the anti Shinblade squad. If you happen to be a victim of abuse or what have you, don't do what Shadow and Angel did and sit on it for months on end, claiming you're giving the other person time to confess, or make excuses for not going to the police like, sexual assault is hard to prove, or, we're black so we don't have a good relationship with the police, of course they won't help us. Definitely don't do what Angel did and report it months after it happened and try to say, see, I told you the police wouldn't help me. Not that long ago, Chrissy Victory retweeted my Noah Brown video. Seeing all these people shower her with sympathy pissed me off because I can guarantee that many people who said sorry didn't even watch it except for one person. Look, I don't even care about the views. If you're willing to say sorry or say you hate the FGC, you could inform yourself on the situation. These people on Twitter expect something to happen because they tweeted about it. Unfortunately, the Noah Brown case is just as hard to prove as the Shinblade case, and posting about it won't be enough to cause an uproar. You can support the victim, but if you really care about what happened to them, inform yourself. No matter who you are or what happened to you, the justice system was made to protect us. The least you could do is report it the moment it happens. Posting your story on Twitter is only going to get you virtual sympathy and that won't help you. You can't expect to be helped if you won't help yourself. If you want instant results from stories with barely any evidence, both the Smash community and Strive community will be happy to house you. Then again, the Smash community will lie about you, while the Strive community will straight up threaten you if you dare look in the any story. Hey, Vicky, Vicky Viper, so, multi-game so specialist and multi-game champion, you know, resorts to violence because you looked into a story. Hey, I'd have some heartfelt speech about how everybody should stop fighting and be able to sit down with TOs and event organizers to have a discussion about solutions to take place in the future. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. There is a previous version of the script where I mentioned contacting Moni about something similar, seeing as she created a template for such an occasion. My plan was to gain access to the document and share it around. I requested access, saw that I got denied, and right when I sent her a message kindly asking if I could see it, I was blocked. I'ma be honest. I don't think anything is going to happen. There's barely any evidence. Shadow, Angel, Max, and the other accusers vying for Shinblade's guilt clearly enjoy being degraded and will block or ignore you for asking questions. It's weird how the people being accused of everything under the sun are willing to speak to me, sometimes, but the victims who want their voices heard and their abusers to face consequences don't. If Angel, Shadow, Max, Ruthie, Akatsuki, Tex, Monty, Halos, or FemChef have anything to say about me or my video, I won't care. If they want to disregard me and keep referring to me as the guy who asked what Angel was wearing, that's perfectly fine too. They'd rather garner the attention from the people who clearly hate them. They already told me they haven't watched my video, so it's not like they're watching this one either. Before I bring this case to a close, there's one more thing I'd like to show everybody. Hey Kai. Yo. You want to help me with these lyrics real quick? Yeah, for sure. What's up? I am having trouble trying to make this specific line flow. First off, shout out to the Pipe Riders and the Goat Sam Lake. I'd like to thank everybody who spoke to me, and I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And a quick word to Theo. Let this be a reminder you're not the professional player, commentator, analyst, or whatever meta AI had to pull out of his ass to say about you. You're delusional if you think you're a celebrity people try to clout chase off of. I'ma just say this dude, you reap what you sow. We're in the alarm, we got a predator in the vicinity. He's saying his boots are blowing up, but when you go look, you'll see that it's like some infamy. Wait, wait, look in the sky. Who could that be? A bird? A plane? Wrong, it's me! Fieldy Predator, under the scenes. Skyline for girls are under 15. I really hate people like DJ and Tex. They bully me for having a drink sex. They're lying. I never committed the crime. I'm already like, why would I waste my time? Pedro Lee from is getting upset. Posting drama all day. Who's really obsessed? There's no shock to me about why you're depressed. Have you tried locking off? It's common sense. However, if that doesn't work, try remembering this lesson. Long ways for results, sideways for attention, nigga. nigga. My little man is the wannabe gangster, grooming a point. He needed a little taper. If you want to claim that you're some kind of danger, I'll treat you like daddy did. Call me Darth Vader. Vader. You say that yourself, but you act like degenerate. You cannot fight me. I'm strong like the senator. 
after this diss is over. I think I'll call you Milo Predator. That's me in Atlanta. It's, it's open, open carry. Got a hood friend who can hold it steady. And I know where you live. Let's say hi to Frankie. You and Fox's home. All your hood friends imagine it. Got me for the Predator. Let's roll his ass up like a tuck. Nipping at the children. Boy, you sick, man. MLP is fuck. Basement dwelling. Goblins oozing. Look, cause he can't keep a buck. If I ever catch you in Atlanta, bitch, you know what's up. Wait a second. Let me see this little check. Let me check. Mama. 40 year old rapper who can't get no bitches. Making music, but it's like nobody listen. The dog shit, buddy. Say he ride for women, but the same offender. I love my women. Staying with your parents, boy, you not embarrassed. I'm a sex offender. If I catch you lacking, might not be the fairest. Theo Lee, Michael P. Multiple names that I see. Talking about a Twitter spree. Let's give a little history. Met a girl from minor sex. Choked out by your dad, I get bankrupted. It's making sense that you don't get the minor check. Oh, uh, now you mad. Got an attitude talking shit on Twitter, then he fucked it up and got removed. Take it off to YouTube, maybe then you'll get a little views. Bring the beef to me again, you're bound to catch a nine or two. God damn, I could probably go a little more. Pass it to my niggas, beat you down, and they kick out the door. Put that jaw down under curve and watch the T fly out his war. Shitty life is what you get, I know it's what you're yearning for. Roll the split up while I'm in the mix. Pieces at the door, gotta make some bands and make some hits. Hope that you ain't no dance if you like kids, bitch. If you like kids, bitch, dance if you like kids, bitch. If you like kids, bitch, dance if you like kids, bitch. If you like kids, bitch, dance if you like kids, bitch. If you like kids, bitch. Since you all done came in, work. 